This afternoon, my office filed formal charges against Christopher Lee Watts. Tonight, a bombshell twist in the case against Christopher Watts, accused of killing his pregnant wife and two daughters. In a newly released affidavit, Watts saying it was his now deceased wife, Shanann, who murdered three-year-old Celeste and four-year-old Bella. It is a new twist in this type of case for the accused to sort of start spinning plates as far as what happened. Documents revealing that Watts claimed to have talked to his wife about marital separation that morning and later found her actively strangling one of their daughters while the other laid sprawled out on her bed and blew. The affidavit claims he then went into a rage and ultimately strangled Shanann to death. If his story would end up being true, obviously a jury is going to look very favorably and probably a judge too as to what happened. This news coming after a slew of charges against the Colorado husband and father. At any point did you consider the death penalty? Way too early to have that conversation. They seemed like the picture of suburban bliss. My kids have fun, like, look. They're sitting there playing with daddy. In Facebook videos, Watts played the part of a loving husband and doting father. But behind the smiles, perhaps a different story. Those same documents now revealing that Chris was actively involved in an affair with a coworker, something he had previously denied. But according to Shanann's friend, Nicole Atkinson, the last friend to see her alive, there were signs the couple's marriage was straining. He wasn't being the loving Chris that he normally was. He wasn't touching or hugging or doing stuff like that. And he wasn't being as attentive to the girls as he normally is. Did she suspect he might have been cheating? There was speculation, but she didn't want to believe that either, so. All of this a far cry from the portrait of a happy wife on Facebook gushing about her supportive husband. He stuck around, and he stuck around because he was the one for me. And he is amazing. And I can't tell you how wonderful he is. Atkinson had seen Shanann that morning around 2 a.m., she says, dropping her off at home after returning from an out-of-town business trip. She went inside, turned around and waved at me, and shut the door. But several hours later, the 34-year-old mother of two isn't answering her phone. She misses a doctor's appointment. Shanann was 15 weeks pregnant. She was going to get to hear the baby's heartbeat and see how he or she was doing. Growing worried, Atkinson says she went over to their house. Things were not how I would think that they were supposed to be, I guess. The front door was locked differently than it normally was. I had my son look in the garage to see if her car was there, and it was there, which was really peculiar because Shanann doesn't go places without her car, usually because both of the girls are in car seats. Atkinson calls Shanann's husband, who she says tells her the last time he saw his wife and kids was that morning around 5.15 when he left for work. So he tells you everything's normal, she's on a play date. Yes. And you didn't buy that? No, because Shanann, she, like in my mind, I couldn't figure out why she'd go on a play date without her car. Atkinson says she tells Watts she's calling the police for a welfare check and that he says he'll meet her at the couple's home. You knew even then his story was not adding up. It, it wasn't making sense to me. Inside the house, authorities find Shanann's purse, phone, and keys, but no other signs of life. The girls' beds weren't made. Shanann was very OCD. Everything in her house had a place. Everything was labeled. If something was out of the ordinary, it was really out of the ordinary for her. Still hopeful Shanann and her girls are alive, the entire community jumps into action. Tonight, police issued a missing endangered alert. A pregnant woman and her two daughters missing from Frederick. By Tuesday afternoon, Chris Watts is talking to local TV stations. Shanann, Bella, Celeste, if you're out there, just just come back. Like, if somebody has her, just please bring her back. Interviews that first evoked sympathy, but on closer examination, suspicion. Watts revealing he and his wife exchanged words the morning she vanished. It wasn't like an argument. We had an emotional conversation, but I'll leave it at that. But it's, I just want them back. His vocal cords are, uh, in my view, constricted. It comes with anxiety and stress. Former FBI agent and ABC News consultant Brad Garrett points to Watts' body language in those interviews. When people sort of cross their arms, sort of lock their body down, and then sometimes start rocking back and forth, it's a defense mechanism. That in combination with a number of other things I think is potentially telling 
that he's not telling the truth. So he does these interviews on Tuesday. What did you think of his demeanor overall? Yeah, it was very odd. He just was sitting there waiting for something to happen. The last time I talked to him, he said, I just want to cry. And I looked at him and said, why aren't you? On Wednesday, everything changed. A heartbreaking outcome to the story we have been tracking all week, the confession of a father. I didn't know what to say or do. I don't know. I sat on our bed for I don't even know how long and didn't move because I, I didn't want to think that they weren't coming back. <laughs> Late Wednesday night, Watts is arrested. By Thursday, police were at the oil fields where Watts used to work and within hours found three bodies. Court documents revealed they discovered Shanann's body in a shallow grave. The bodies of Bella and Celeste found submerged for days in oil tanks. You have the right to counsel. You understand? In an interview with authorities, Watts filling in the blanks. According to an affidavit, he loaded all three bodies into the backseat of his work truck and took them to an oil work site. If your wife murders your children and then you in a fit of rage murder her, would a logical person then secrete the bodies in such a way and you take them to work so we'll, again we'll have to see but it's it's it, it's a story that has on the surface in my view some implausibility it's been a long week for the frederick police department obviously for shenan's family um it's been a long week tonight nine charges against watts announced at a press conference including three counts of first degree murder and one for unlawful termination of a pregnancy Shanann's father emotional as he thanked the community for their support. And keep the prayers coming for our family. Watts is due back in court tomorrow morning. I mean, you think back at like the barbecues that you had, the times your kids played together, um, the time that you spent with them, the places that you went with them, like any little thing that would have even remotely given you the idea that it was even possible. I mean, every couples or families have their issues but not to where it justifies what was done. For Nightline, I'm Clayton Sandell in Frederick, Colorado.